What is up, Web3 people? Welcome back to the Morales channel. Today, we're going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough about this documentation tutorial that's showing you how to self-host a Morales server and what the server allows you to do because Morales is running in the back end. It allows you to authenticate with an EVM chain, make requests to the EVM API, make requests to the Solana API, and more and more. And why having your own server and back end is so cool because it gives you full control. You get all the access to your data and databases, and you can even save costs by fine-tuning your hosting, altering rate limits, etc., and make your own cloud functions to go into your backend. How cool does that sound? And even better, if you're an OG Morales fan and have been using Morales from day one, you're probably familiar with Morales servers. So basically what we're going to do is implement something similar to Morales servers so you get access to good old Morales servers but you're hosting it yourself, your own database, et cetera, et cetera. If this sounds exciting to you, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to build this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, let's get started with tutorial. The link to this documentation page will be in the description below if you want to check it out. But over here in the menu, let's first run a parse server locally. So the prerequisites for this are that you have Node.js installed, a version 16 or above, and you have a package manager like Yarn or MPN. We'll be using Yarn. And then you have a setup project over here set up by our wonderful mages here at Morales. You can see the GitHub or you can just download the project right away. Let's download it straight away. And it downloads over here in our Google Chrome. Let's go split screen mode. And here I have a folder I created called self-hosting where we're going to drop this folder and unzip it. Beautiful, beautiful. Then you can just remove the zipped folder and open up our parse server. We have all the files in here. Let's open up a window for Visual Studio Code. Voila, like so. And then we can just drag our project into Visual Studio Code like so and open it up fully like so. Now, if you open up from the bottom over here, you should have a terminal where we are in this per server migration folder. All right, that's the first steps done. So now let's start working in this repository. First, you can go ahead and install all the dependencies by running yarn install in the terminal. And while that's running, you can close that and open the env.example file. We'll actually change the name of the env example file, rename to just .env, save that. And now you have a few environment variables we have to fill out. So for the Morales API key, you can get that from your Morales admin dashboard. But jumping into Google Chrome, here I have my servers. But if you press the Web3 API in the left sidebar, you have your API key, which you can copy. This is something you need to keep safe. So don't share it with anyone. And you can just paste it in here. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. You should not use this API key and you should definitely keep your own API key safe. Now for our master key, you can set your own master key. You should set a very secure one. We'll just set one, two, three for this case. But for your production builds, set a very safe master key that you don't share with anyone. Then an application ID. So for this, we'll just put 001. So this is our first application ID. Keep this safe as well. For our development server, we'll just use localhost 1337. When we go to deploy to production in the end, we'll actually use our production server but for now this is okay now our cloud path will be generated after we build our project and our database uri so we'll use mongodb for this and for that we'll have to jump into google chrome and generate a mongodb uri for us all right so you can jump back into google chrome go to mongodb.com and log into your account or sign up if you don't already have one now if it's your first time you'll have some initial setup where you can set up a so-called cluster but after that you'll come to your admin dashboard where you can go to database access first of all and add a new database user. We'll create a user called J Morales. As the password, we'll set J Morales123 explanation mark. Let's show it so you see it. It's J Morales, not Jao Morales. Like so. Again, this is just going to be a temporary account so you see what's going on. Then add a built in role. We'll say read and write access to our database. And for this project, we'll just set temporary usage for, say, a day so we can use it for this day and then it won't be active anymore. Add this user. And now we have a user. Next, network access. So which IP addresses have access to your database? Add an IP address. And you can allow access for any verb, for example. And again, we'll just make this for one day in this case. So our accesses are nulled after a day. Now confirm that. As that's confirming, you can jump into the database tab. And over here, you want to be able to connect to your database, right? So our connections were updated. So now we can press this connect button and connect your application. Here we get our database URI, which we can copy and jump back into our Visual Studio Code dot env file where we can set it to our database uri over here paste it in 
And you already see our username over here at J Morales, but we have to add that password we set. We set it to be J Morales123 exclamation mark. And if you want to set a name for your database, we can set it to be, for example, parse over here after the mongodb.net slash because parse server is the open source backend server we are using here. So now save that. And finally, for rate limiting, we're using something called Redis. So we again have to find a Redis URI, which we can get again by going to Google Chrome, navigating to redis.com slash Redis Enterprise Cloud Overview, and you can try it for free. Again, sign up with Google and you'll come to your admin dashboard. In the initial setup, you'll most likely set up a database, but if you haven't, you can just create a new database. And again, you have to go to the data access control where you have to first set a role. Add a new role. We can give it a name called maybe super role select databases we will give it access to our subscription Morales Redis database, and it'll have full access. Save those changes and save that role. Now that role is being pending. So after that's done, we can jump in to the users tab over here and create a new user. The role is here super, we'll give it a name. Again, we'll say J Morales as the username like so and enter a password, we'll enter the same password for simplicity's sake. Now go ahead and press the check mark. And now your user is being generated. Now you can jump back into the databases. And we have a endpoint to this Redis database, which you can copy from this link over here. So copy that and jump back into Visual Studio Code. And you can paste that over in here. But this time leave the Redis semicolon and two slashes and only paste the endpoint over here. And as we set the same profile name and password as we did for MongoDB, we can copy them, add it to the start of the string over here and add a at symbol like so. And now this is your Redis connection string set up and you're basically ready with your environment variables. Of course, if you want to set the rate limits, you can set them below over here, but we'll just leave the default ones for now. With that all set up, you can open up the terminal again and yarn should have already installed all your dependencies. And now you can use yarn to build this project. Let's build this project. That's beautiful done in 1.13 seconds and you get a build folder. And now all the stuff to do is run yarn dev to get a development server of your parse backend server that is running Morales. So run a yarn dev. There may be a few warnings, but we're working on these. But where Morales server is now running on port 1337. And look at this, our parse live query server started running. Now going to Google Chrome, you can go to localhost 1337 slash server like you see over here. And on the page, we get an error unauthorized, but this is good. This means that it's up and running and we can go ahead and create a client where we can call the server and have access to Morales. And the beautiful thing about this is that packages like React Morales work now with this server that you're hosting by yourself. So go ahead and jump back into the documentation over here. And in the left bar, we should have connect to your client. Again, there is a sample project where you can look at the GitHub or you can download the project. Let's just download the project. Again, go to split screen mode. And in the same self hosting folder, let's add our zipped parse server client and unzip it. Like so again, delete the zip file and open up a new window of Visual Studio Code. Beautiful, beautiful. And now we can drop our React client into Visual Studio Code, open this up in full screen. And now we can start working on the React client over here, which we can connect to our own parse server. Of course, you don't have to copy this parse client sample project. You can use your own React project for this as well. We're just using this as an example. So now again, we jump into the ENV folder, rename it to .env, take away the example like so. And again, if you're familiar with Morales projects or any previous Morales builds in the environment variable, you set a server URL and application ID. Now, usually you got these from your Morales admin dashboard, but now we set up our own parse server. So we use that server we just set up. So we hit use localhost 1337 slash server. And for the application ID, whatever you set for your parse server application ID in the .env folder in that repository, we set 001 in our case and save that. Now, if you go check out the source folder, there's an index.tsx file. We're getting some errors now because we haven't installed the dependencies yet. But here you see that we are using a Morales provider where we use that server URL and app ID, but this case, our own server URL and app IDs. So now, like I already foreshadowed, we have to install the dependencies. Again, go ahead and run yarn install. 
All right, so it might take a while to install the dependencies, but after that's done, your project is ready straight out the box. You have a nice little project with some functionality already built in. So let's test it out first. Run yarn start to start this locally, this React project. And it should open up localhost 3000 to you looking something like this. Now, how cool is that? It already has built in authentication functionality. So it can authenticate with say MetaMask over here. It asks which account we want to connect. We connect account five, connect. And now as we press again, we get to sign the message sent by the Morales authentication API, sign that. And now look at this, we have this user signed in. And I already know that this user has some NFTs on the Polygon chain. So if we press the EVM NFTs, it shows no NFTs on the Ethereum chain. But if we change the Polygon and show NFTs, it is using the EVM API from our own self hosted server to fetch these NFTs on the Polygon chain this account has. How cool is that? Now let's delve into the actual usability of this. So jumping into the Visual Studio code, let me, for example, show the functionality of the NFTs. So jumping into the components folder, we have something called NFT grid. And over here, if we close down the terminal, we're using from React Morales use NFT balances, and it works like back in the day with React Morales, you have to provide the chain ID, which we get from the front end and the address of the user, we also set by authenticating to the app, and then because we, our whole app is wrapped around the Morales provider that's connected to our own backend server, which has Morales running, we're able to fetch NFTs. How cool is that? Let's play around with the functionality. So go over here to views, home to transactions, and let's build something out with React Morales over here. So of course, your own database is a cool feature by running your own Morales backend because we've integrated with a MongoDB, we can do that over here. Let's first import use Morales from React Morales. Then go ahead and destructure Morales from use Morales, like so. And now create a function to add to our database. So asynchronous function food, for example. And here, let's go ahead and create a object called food. So as long as there's a class in our database called food, we'll just extend that but otherwise we'll create a new one. Now we want to make a new food into our database. Let's do that like so. And for our food element, we want to set the food to pizza. And let's also go ahead and set a user or an ETH address that enjoys eating pizza. So essentially, this food class is your favorite food for different ETH addresses. If this will make sense in a bit, just entertain it for now. And then we'll finally go ahead and save this food item into our database, like so. And so if you're familiar with Morales v1, this was the way where you call different classes in your database and added new elements into that class in your database by setting the different attributes and then saving that new element. Now we also have to call this function. So let's create a simple button over here. We can just call it food and say on click equals food like so. So now go ahead and restart your react app control C and run npm start again that refreshes your page and you see we have this button called food. Let's press the button now press it like so. And guess what's happened if we go check out our Mongo database. So we have our Mongo database over here, we can browse our collections. And look at this, we have our parse database that we set in our environment variables for our own self hosted server. And we just created a food class within it. And look at this, the food is pizza and the ETH address is 0x0. And look at this, because we've already using Morales parse server, we already have these other classes as well. So anytime a user authenticates, we get a new user element. So you have this user, we just authenticated the 0x9, we checked his NFTs, this new user is created into your Mongo database, because it's running on your parse backend, that's constantly running on localhost 1337. How cool is that? But now we have this food element. But now the coolest feature of all, especially if you're a Morales v1 user, if we jump over here into our Morales admin dashboard, check out our servers. So if you still have a server, press the settings, your database, and you access your database, I have it open over here, you might have some data that you want to use in your own self hosted backend. So in this case, we have a class called food where we already have two elements. We have 0x9233 over here who likes pizza and 0x5DAD who likes tacos. So these are the same attributes that we just created into our Mongo database food class over here, but we have it in our Morales database. How do we go ahead and migrate this data into our own new self hosted backend? For this, I've created a special repository. It'll be linked in the description below, and you can go ahead and clone this repository. So, one more time, open a new window of Visual Studio Code. 
All right, so I have the repository cloned over here in Visual Studio Code. So if you're not familiar with how to do it, just run git clone in the folder you want to clone it to and then paste the link from the GitHub repository over in here. Now this will clone the repository for you and you'll have a index.js file which has all the functionality we're going to use. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a connection to both our Morales database which we connect to using Mongo host IP address and the port we get from our Morales admin dashboard. I'll show you how to do that shortly here. And then you have your own MongoDB URI we set up at the start of this project and you use for your own parse backend. So you should have created this at the start of the video. Now we create a connection to both of them and then we just query whatever database we want. So the Morales databases are called parse as well as what we call our own self-hosted backend database. And then the collection name, of course, we both named them food. So this should work perfectly fine. And after you run this Node.js script, you'll transfer all your data from your Morales database collection with a class name of food to your own database on your parse backend self-hosted where the collection name is food. This is a mouthful, but let's take a look at how this works. Open up the terminal again and run npm i to install all the dependencies of this Node.js script. And then you should be able to run node index.js and look at that connected su successfully to your server it wrote a file and inserted into our new database if we check out our output file.json format this a bit nicer open it up you look at this we have our tacos from eth address 0x5 and our pizza from 0x9223 if we go check out our mongo database here we haven't refreshed so we just still have that one that we created from our client to our self-hosted backend straight away but now let's see if this migration works so we'll refresh the page and look at this now our food class has three objects it has the one that we created ourselves but it has these two that we migrated from our own Morales backend, now sitting in your self-hosted backend. So that is how quick and easy it is to migrate your Morales database into your Mongo database. I hope that was simple enough for you. And now final thing to do is to deploy our self-hosted server to the world to see because now it's only running on localhost. So you want other people to be able to access it across the world. So let's deploy it to Heroku next. So for this, I'll have you head over to heroku.com, log in and create a new application on Heroku. You can call it whatever you like. We'll just call it Morales host. Select a road region closest to you. We'll do Europe because we're closer to Europe and create app. And now with this done, you can go ahead and push your app from your terminal straight to Heroku using the Heroku CLI and Git. So go ahead and download and install Heroku CLI if you haven't. And if you have, go ahead and just copy Heroku login and jump in to the parse server migration repository. So that is the repository we worked on first. Jump into Visual Studio Code. All right, so back in our own self-hosted parse backend repository, last time we worked on it, we were on .env file setting environment variables. Now open up the terminal again and go ahead and log into Heroku. Run Heroku login. By pressing enter, this will open up a browser where you can log in. I'll do that now. All right, the logging in is done. And now we can go ahead and initialize Git. And then we'll get remote access to our Morales host project on Heroku. These commands will be in Heroku as well on the deploy page. So you don't have to copy them out from here. Then we just add all our folders into this repository. We commit everything we added to the repository. And then finally, we push to the Heroku master branch. Now with that done, Heroku cannot read our .env file, so we have to go set these environment variables manually on the Heroku app. So jump back into Google Chrome. If you come to the Heroku overview page for your project, you should have your app deployed just very recently here. And you can go over to the settings and reveal the config vars. So all you have to do here is copy from your environment variables all the key and value pairs we set in there and you should be ready to go. So I'll do that quickly over here. All right, so I've added all the files we had in the env except for the server underscore URL, which is gonna be of this form, https semicolon slash slash your project name on heroku dot heroku app dot com slash server. So you add that and that is you ready. Your Heroku app should be up and running. You can check that everything's going fine in the more tab, view logs. 
And here you see your Morales server is running on port 34088, parsed live query server started running. So everything should be fine. Now, last thing to do, if we look at the settings, reveal our config bars, and we get our server URL from over here, let's copy this. We have to change this to our client side React app to check if everything is working. And then you have a self hosted parse server with Morales running on it, which you can access from anywhere in the world. So now open up the React client we opened as a second repository. All right, so it's this file where we set the button to import data into our database, we can actually change this to test it out. So let's say chips for 0x1, save that. And now in the environment variables, this is the more important thing, you have to set your app server URL to the server that's running on Heroku right now, which is Morales host Heroku app server, save that and now run this react client and we can test it out. So run yarn start. At first glance, everything seems to be working nice. Let's try and authenticate using MetaMask seems to be working nice. It's asking us to sign our signature request for account five, we sign. We're now authenticated. And if we press the food button, now our database should be updated with a new object for our food with chips and 0x1. Let's refresh this. And look at that, we now have four objects with the latest one being chips for ETH address 0x1. So now server is running on Heroku for the whole world to see. And that is how you self host a Morales server step by step. I hopefully you enjoyed this video, you learned something and you can apply this to your own project. I'll catch you in the next one.